Hey Redemption Gateway, it's John here and we're back with the Daily Dose talking through these 10 commitments we're making as a church uh, really to help um, pray towards holiness in our church and health of our nation. This is all part of our King Jesus 2020 commitments and today we're looking at the commitment of wisdom. The commitment of wisdom and it says, I commit to having my views challenged by the biblical story rather than using the Bible to proof text my predetermined positions. That's good. We all need wisdom. I don't know about you, but all the time I just feel like there's so many areas that I'm lacking in wisdom. I wish I knew more about this or had more experience in that. Now, we all want wisdom, and it's interesting because God, throughout the scriptures, makes it clear that he's the source of wisdom. I mean, he knows it all. He's created it all. Um, the scriptures are his words to us, breathed out uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The scriptures are the source that we go to uh, for wisdom, to know how to live, to know how to think, to know how to relate and to act, what we should care about, what we should do, what we should not do. We go to the scriptures for these things, and that should be the baseline of what we're doing um, when it comes to all uh, how we interact and how we engage with culture. But I think sometimes, especially within the church, we can fall into this trap where we begin using the same scripture as our foundation to promote and push different viewpoints. And so I, I do want to push back a little bit on this on this commitment. It says we, we want to be willing to be challenged. And I think I think what's at the heart here is who is the author of the scriptures? Who's the author of the story? We don't want to just know God's words. We want to know God. We want to know his heart. I think that's where wisdom comes from. And, I, and I'll tell you what, this happens all the time at home with uh, my wife and I, w with our kids. We're constantly having these conversations where they're coming and saying, well, you said, Dad. And I'll go, I know I said that, but you know what I meant. Have you ever had that experience? Something like that, if you're a parent? It drives me crazy. I'm going, you know me well enough to know that's not what I meant. I, I remember growing up, my mom would say something like, hey, pick up your shoes off the living room floor. We have company coming over. And I'd go over and I'd lift them off the floor and set them on the couch. And she'd just look at me and I, you know, I was just being rebellious. But I knew what she meant. I knew her heart, what she was trying to communicate. Um, but yet, I like to just say, well, this is what you said. And I think sometimes, unintentionally, if, if sin creates this vacuum where we look inward, unintentionally we begin to start to find scriptures that support our point of view. If sin makes us at the center of the story, then uh, all of the things around us are going to support that point of view. We have to remember what story we're in, whose story we're in. Psalm 119 says, Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord, Blessed are those who keep his testimony, keeping the commandments, keeping his words. Blessed are those who seek him with their whole heart and walk in his ways. We can't just follow the letter of the law. We want to know what God says based on who he is. We want to know his character. And that takes humility. The humility to go, I don't know it all. And maybe even the things I think I know need to be reexamined. And so we want to be a people who are willing to be challenged. We want to examine our motives, and we really want to humbly seek the heart of God as we love one another.